But talk to me about what's the on the agenda for you with the Prime Minister Boris Johnson today in terms of your region security. Well, I think it's not just uh, my region security, it's actually the security of all of Europe which is at stake. Uh, I think that we have seen that naivete about uh, Putin, about Putin's Russia over the past three weeks has completely evaporated. I suppose the next uh, step that we need is the fear of Putin and of Putin's Russia also has to evaporate. If we look at the Ukrainian people, uh, we can see uh, an incredibly strong determination not to be subjugated, not to uh, allow this imperialist, uh, imperialistic uh, dictator uh, destroy their country, destroy their independence, destroy their uh, way of life. Uh, so what we have to do uh, is in always continue to support Ukraine, which we are doing um, militarily, uh, humanitarily, with medicines, with fuel, uh, with food, with everything. But at the same time, uh, it's very important that uh, in Europe and in NATO especially, we shore up our own uh, defenses and uh, uh, shore up the entire eastern flank from the Baltic down to the Black Sea. Uh, this is actually already happening. It's a very, very good uh, signal. Uh, we need to keep up those efforts. And uh, uh, Russia has to understand uh, that any uh, uh, escalation outside uh, and into NATO territory uh, would uh, be devastating because, of course, the combined uh, might of NATO is simply not comparable uh, to uh, the Russian military. Yes, talk to me about how you're bolstering your own country's security. You talked about it a little there. Um, extra NATO troops in your country bolstering that eastern flank. And I was reading, um, interestingly, earlier that more people are enlisting into the volunteer brigades of Latvia's National Guard uh, over the last few days, more than over the whole of the last year. This is a real concern for the people of your country, getting their security measures in place for any kind of Russian aggression on your soil. Uh, of course it is. But uh, for years, we've been bolstering our uh, defences. Uh, we have been spending over 2 per cent of our GDP. I think this year it's about 2.2, 2.3 per cent of GDP. Uh, we just took a government decision to increase that to 2.5 per cent. Uh, so we will continue to bolster our own uh, defences. Uh, we have a, a, a very modern, very efficient uh, fighting force. Uh, and we are seeing now that the voluntary recruits uh, coming in uh, is unprecedented. Uh, people in my country uh, are very uh, loyal patriots, and this is a concrete step that people are doing. People are asking themselves, what can I do to help? So many are donating money. Uh, uh, we've had huge, huge inflows of private donations. Uh, companies are offering all kinds of goods that they have uh, to be shipped to Ukraine. Uh, 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 people are offering their homes, opening up their homes. We, we don't have a, um, a problem with big refugee centers because basically most of the, or all the Ukrainians that are coming to our country are being taken, taken open-armed uh, into uh, people's homes. So uh, people are very engaged. Uh, we see what is happening there. We understand that it has everything to do with us, but with us not only as Latvians or as, as a Baltic nation, but as Europeans. Uh, and this is uh, what we have to uh, uh, realize, and we can stand up to it, and we must stand up to it. Yeah, we focus on what you can do militarily, um, but I know that the Joint Expeditionary Force, the summit that the Prime Minister Boris Johnson is hosting, including Latvia, Lithuania, the Netherlands, Sweden and Norway, all the members this week, um, the Prime Minister said that he wants to focus not just on the military aspect of defence, uh, but those, the resilient aspects that go beyond our military footing. What other kind of measures can you put in place to resist Vladimir Putin's threats? Well, the first, uh, the basics is already there. There is a, co a complete realization of what we're dealing with, an aggressive dictator who is attacking a neighboring, a peaceful uh, neighboring country. Uh, so the, uh, the Joint uh, Expeditionary Force, Jeff, uh, is, is a very important part of the response against that. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great initiative. It, it fits within the, the broader framework of uh, NATO. Uh, and what it is is, is a rapid uh, deployment uh, capability across uh, all of the, the north of Europe uh, to come to the aid of one another as the uh, case may arise to uh, perform exercises together to keep the Baltic Sea uh, open and the North Sea. So uh, these, this is very important. But, of course, uh, uh, th there, are, there are many other things uh, that we can do uh, to uh, strengthen our resilience, and that is also uh, isolating Russia. So this war is already having an impact in my country, in Britain, throughout the world. 
in terms of our economies. The, the, it, the Ukrainians are paying for the war with their lives, with their physical infrastructure, with their schools, with their hospitals that are being destroyed. We're paying through it through higher energy prices and some other inconveniences in, in, in terms of the flow of goods. But this is a small, small uh, cost to bear. So we, as politicians, have a responsibility to explain to our our, our, our citizens uh, what is happening and why it's happening. Uh, it's all part of a sense of the war effort. And the process of isolating Putin's regime has tremendous costs for the Russian economy, but it will also have costs for ours. But once again, these costs, compared to what we know is and we see on the screens happening in Ukraine, are minuscule. And uh, this is what we need to do, is to uh, understand and convey to our citizens what the cost of this war is to us, and that we have to bear this cost. Uh, the, the, the other option is uh, complete physical destruction, as we see uh, in Ukraine. Can I just ask you something that you will have a unique view on as a prime minister, as a, as a leader of Latvia? We talk about the West, we talk about NATO, we talk about Europe being so much more united as a result of what is going on in Ukraine and, and, and Russia's invasion there. We talk about it being closer knit and being brought being brought to be more unified. Do you get a sense of that? Can you put it into words as, for us, what that's like as a prime minister to be talking to other world leaders and being united against such atrocities that we're seeing unfold on our screens? Well, I can say that I and my predecessors uh, for years uh, since the invasion uh, in, in Georgia in, in 2008, we have been uh, raising our voices and saying that Russia is not uh, like us, uh, that the government of Russia is uh, heading towards autocracy, then it was heading towards autocracy. Now I think it's a full-blown dictatorship. Uh, and for years we were not necessarily uh, listened to so much because there was a, a great consensus that, no, no, if, if you engage correctly with Putin, and then uh, things will be fine. Well, now that myth has been shattered. And I can say that at the meetings I am now attending, uh, it's, it's palpable. The unity, uh, for, for example, it, the heads of, of, of the uh, European Union we met in, 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 in Paris, in Versailles, for a, a couple of days last week. Um, we spent long hours speaking, but these were not the typical um, European arguments about a small minor clauses. Everyone was unified as to what the problem is. And what we spent the hour speaking about is what more and what, what can we do more effectively to stop this atrocity. So there's complete unity around the European table. There's complete unity around the NATO table as well. And this is, uh, this is one of the uh, side effects I think Putin never counted on. I think he underestimated democracy. He viewed our arguments and our differences of opinion as a weakness. Uh, but as it turns out that uh, uh, democracies can and must be very strong, especially in the, in the face of imperialistic aggression. And we are uh, uh, coming up to that. And, and we are responding, I think, in a much, uh, much, much uh, harsher manner than, than Putin ever expected. And we have to persevere. This is our uh, mission right now, is to persevere and, and essentially not let Putin win this war of aggression. Yeah, as the Ukrainian prime minister put it so succinctly, well, the world's eyes are now open. We never closed our eyes for a second. And many of Russia's neighbours, like yourself, you didn't close your eyes for a second either. And just a final question on peace talks. We did have some positive uh, noises coming out of Russia over the weekend, offering a glimmer of hope. Peace talks have been paused today. Nothing coming out of those. We hope that they will resume uh, at some point later today or tomorrow. How much hope are you holding out from those peace talks? Uh, I am convinced that Putin will stop only when he is stopped. And when he is stopped, then I'm certain the negotiations will start and they could even be very quick. Putin must be stopped. That is the only way to get him to come to the negotiating table.